Hello, this is a follow-up video slash mini guide on what else you can do with Hateforge. In my previous video, I mentioned I would try other Val skills. Val Lightning Strike is what people originally used with Hateforge, so here's my take on it using some Magic Find. You could also play Val Lightning Strike without Magic Find, you know, even using the Strength Stacking, but I wanted to try some Magic Find after I got to level 100, since I don't care anymore if I died occasionally. Uh, I'm using Greed's Embrace and Gold Worm and this helmet I bought for 8 Divines. I also have the Divination Distillate and the 30% Topaz Flask like in my other build. Uh, with this Magic Find setup, the biggest Divine explosion I got was 7 Divines. And I've done about 50 maps with this character. I would probably switch this Chaos Ring for Adventure's Gamble if I had a Progenesis. I think with Progenesis, you could also drop these Fire and Lightning Resist Flasks. If you are not level 100, I would not use Magic Find gear other than on the Flasks. I didn't die that much with this build, especially after I practiced the playstyle a bit more, but I'd expect a death maybe every 20 maps or so. You can't exactly AFK with this build like the previous Val Volcanic Fisher build since this build has a smaller max hit and is also using Petrified Blood, which might make you die from a degen if there's nothing to gain life off. The skill bar looks a bit weird, but um, every skill has its use. Uh, Berserk is for running around the map faster or the Wildwoods faster whenever I don't need the rage. Uh, Frost Blink is just my travel skill when I need to get over terrain. I'm using Lightning Warp with Lesseration to travel around in the Wildwoods to use less light resource. Corrupting Fever is used to reduce my life if my flasks start to overtake Blood Rage. I think there's certain Headhunter mods that give you physical damage reduction which makes the Divination Divination Distillate heal you too much, um, and basically out healing the Blood Rage degen. So I'll just use this a couple of times if my health starts to get too high. And then Blood Rage for attack speed and frenzy charges, and for keeping our life low so that the Divination Distillate is always active. So the damage for this build comes from a triple elemental damage claw. I bought this claw for 80 divines. The same person had like five other of these almost exact same claws, so he seemed to be crafting a lot of these. I just bought it because I didn't want to have to craft it myself. Uh, we do get another bit of damage from the Blizzard Crown, which I mentioned earlier that I just bought it for eight divines. And then we get, you know, Awakened Added Lightning, uh, Night Blade, Critical Damage, Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks. This is um, important to get level five to get the elemental damage from sport skills cannot be reflected. Uh, physical reflect maps were fine, I, I didn't die in them. And then uh, level 21 Trinity and the 2020 Val Lightning Strike. And then the rest of our damage will come from Headhunter along with Nemus which doubles our damage because the projectiles return. Uh, Val Lightning Strike lasts for 6 seconds. So you can have you know, more than 10 of these out at the same time and each of them attacks at least 5 times per second without any buffs. So you have a lot of projectiles on the screen. So before you try making this build, you should be aware that you know it is a Headhunter build. Headhunter only costs like 70 Divines this league. But you know, as with Headhunter, your character attacks so fast. And then since you're using Val Lightning Strike, there's so many projectiles on the screen that it's going to be pretty straining to look at if you don't turn down the brightness on your monitor. And the build will also be very laggy if you have too many projectiles on the screen. If you get a Soul Eater buff, you don't want to use 5 Val Lightning Strikes or you might lag out your game. I've, I've never crashed or disconnected with this build yet, but I think it came pretty close when I had Soul Eater. So if, if you do get Soul Eater, you, you do want to limit the amount of Val skills you're using, and you'll have more than enough damage anyways. So with Headhunter, Shroudwalker can be annoying in the Wildwoods, and that's happened a few times to me. So what, what I do when that happens is I just unequip the Headhunter really fast and re-equip it. 
I don't need the stats on it, so this doesn't disable any of my gear. Just be careful that you don't drop your headhunter or die like while you're doing this. I'm not really sure what would happen. So here's a comparison of the different lightning strike uh, microtransactions. This is the Vulcan lightning strike, and the frame time is about 16 ms peak. And now I'm going to try the Myrmidon. And this one is a little bit worse at about 21 milliseconds peak. And then the default lightning strike has the best performance of maybe 10 milliseconds peak at most. And then keep in mind this is with Nemus. Nemus makes the performance twice as bad. So in this clip I'm trying to show how lightning strike works with returning projectiles. So a couple weeks ago GGG changed returning projectiles to not expire directly on top of your character. They actually get a little bit of extra distance where they'll they'll continue traveling past where your character is. So returning projectiles not only doubles your damage but it also increases your range in all directions more than just the normal projectile travel distance. You see here like the projectile will go further than where I was originally standing. Uh, for Auras I'm using Precision, Vitality, Petrified Blood, Purity of Elements, and Anger. I'm not reserving more life just so that I can keep Divination distill it up easier. The accuracy rating for precision actually doesn't matter because Val Lightning Strike has can't be evaded. But this just gave me some crit chance, so I leveled it up. The passive tree. So since we're not strength stacking anymore, uh, we just passed straight to call to arms. Uh, and I picked up some of the same nodes along the way. I'm using the same timeless jewel that I had before, but you could drop the timeless jewel. And get something different. Val Lightning Strike costs less rage than the Val Volcanic Fissure, like it only costs 12 rage using the Impossible Escape for Tireless. So because of that we don't need as many of the max rage charms or any honestly it's since uh, my anointed Berserking. So some other useful mods to have are you know, Culling Strike, um, Additional Resist, uh, power charge on crit. You definitely need this take no extra damage from critical strikes while elusive. This is basically replacing the uh, no damage from extra crits mod that we had before. And then you know the, the war cry is grant rage per power. The intelligence is needed because we use a lot of blue gems. And then for my that which was taken I'm using uh, projectiles collide with terrain the damage penetrates elemental resist and then having f just a little bit of extra rage over 60 is nice. Um, basically what this does is it lets you have some rage left over that ticks down after you already use all of your your uh, Val Lightning Strikes. So it gives you a bit of a grace period where you don't have to use your Val Lightning Strikes immediately. And then I think it also has some synergy with this nearby enemies are intimidated while you have rage. So this will have some more uptime if you have like a little bit of leftover rage. So because of that you don't you definitely don't need plus 5 max rage over 60. I think just getting any bit of rage over 60 is is a nice to have. Um, this massive thread of hope was the last thing they bought with this build which is about I think 84 divines. Um, it basically lets you take this uh, elemental penetration, this uh, attack speed, movement speed, attack speed, movement speed, uh, some more life nodes for only two points, um, one-handed damage and attack speed. So because of this thread of hope, um, I was able to allocate these chaining range nodes, which I don't know if they're that good, but since I'm Deadeye with the Ricochet, I thought I would try them. For Cluster Jewels, I just have a Elemental Damage Cluster Jewel. Um, I'm using 
forbidden flame nature's adrenaline each of these jewels was only two divines and they basically give you infinite flash sustain with just uh, a few uh, passives on the tree and then I get onslaught through uh, this lead by example and then this one is just give me a little extra crit I think that's about it for the passive tree you do need every point in this character like it was pretty hard for me to design a tree like there, there's only a few points here that you can swap in or out if you're not level 100 so I, I would suggest to get level 100 or at least play very safe until you're level 100 before trying to make a magic find bow lightning strike character I'm using a low to medium investment juicing strategy that isn't penalized too much if you have to skip a map or if you just have bad wildwoods or bad drops. Uh, the Atlas tree uses Shrines, Legion, Beyond, Breach, and Harbinger. I'm not using Wandering Path, so I am losing a bit of quantity and, and rarity. Um, but I still get 120 to 140 rares per map, according to my map device counter. And the Max Roll Legion Guide says that pack size doesn't affect the Legions. Uh, there was a post by Bex saying that they do, but I, I don't know which one is true. Um, but, you know, since we're not using Wandering Path, the, the Breach and Legion notables are pretty good. Uh, you know, we have 20% increased monster density. We can use the Breach's open slower. Um, we have, you know, increased number of altars. We get uh, more emblems. We get a bunch more breaches, um, and then there's this note here that adds two additional sergeants, which adds two more rares. This makes your legions easier to do since they take 50% increased damage. Um, you know, more your breaches have more rare monsters. You know, more breaches. Um, you know, additional harbinger. We get harbinger bosses, and then we get harbinger cooldown recovery. Like without this node, I think Harbinger takes way too long to do. Beyond is the only league mechanic that doesn't benefit that much from the, the notables that you can use without wandering paths. So as I said, this is medium investment. I'm using Gilded Reliquary, Rusted Breach, Rusted Legion, and then any random Harbinger Scarabs that I have. I haven't had to buy any Harbinger Scarabs yet, I've been basically self-sustaining these. On the map device you want to use Beyond, unless you already have it on your map, but there's not very much else you can pick. For compasses, the most expensive one is this one, which is the Mirror of Delirium. Um, I think this is about 90, 70 to 90 Chaos for 4 uses. The Breach, 2 additional Breaches is like 0.8 Divines for 16 uses, um, Legion Encounter. I think it's like 10 chaos per compass and then the soul game prevention sex sense are like four or five chaos per compass so this build clears jungle valley including the wild woods the boss and looting a bunch of small chaos worth items in about 8 to 14 minutes depending on how much small loot that i have to pick up since this build is using most of the same defense tech as my previous build this build can run any blue altars. The only map mods that I would avoid are reduced cooldown recovery rate and reduced flash charges gained. So I'm pretty much done with this league. The only thing left for me to do on this character would be to farm a progenesis and fit in some more magic find. I mean this with this setup it would probably only take about 3 hours to get 80 divines. Uh, the Diablo 4 season 3 is coming out so I will be checking that out later. As usual. Uh, Please ask any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'd also be interested to see what other people are doing with Hateforge. If if GGG still doesn't nerf the soul game prevention sextant after all of these builds, um, I don't know. The level of power you get for like 4 chaos is kind of ridiculous. I'm kind of looking forward to PoE 2 at this point for a power reset. Um, maybe others feel the same. Next I'm going to show a full map clear including the wildwoods. 
I've seen a lot of Wildwood strategy videos and I'm aware of the diamond strategy. And I think what works best for me when it's like the least effort is just following the wisp trails diagonally out of the events and then using lightning warp to save a lot of wisp light. Go with Maka's guidance.
to that just yet. Let me down. 